Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you and welcome back to my channel. This is my long awaited and slightly delayed one year review of the Breville Barista Pro. Let's get right into it. Why did I choose the Breville Barista Pro? I researched the Breville Espresso Machine lineup as best I could before buying my Breville Barista Pro. And yes, I bought it myself and have never been sponsored by Breville. I started by looking at like the middle of their lineup, the Barista Express and Barista Pro. I skipped over the Bambino and Bambino Plus, but I'll get back to them in a minute. So comparing the Barista Express to the Barista Pro, looks wise, I liked the Barista Pro more. I liked that it has a display on the machine so that I can see the shot timer and navigate the menu easily but I liked the pressure gauge on the Barista Express. I liked the additional grinder steps or settings on the Barista Pro, and the quick startup time was really appealing too. The steam power and wand is supposed to be better on the Barista Pro, and I liked that the wand tip has four holes instead of one. But with everything I'd heard about how important the grinder is for espresso, would a built-in grinder be worth saving some extra counter space? I considered the Bambino Plus briefly because it appeared to be similar to the Barista Pro on the actual espresso making side of things. But when I looked at and understood the workflow with the buttons on the Bambinos, I again kept preferring the display and easy manual workflow on the Barista Pro. The Barista Pro seemed like it was closer to a prosumer machine rather than a beginner machine. I also didn't like the portafilter spouts on the Bambino Plus. I know you can use third-party portafilters, but I'm just being straight up about my initial thoughts and comparisons. Now I did consider the Breville Dual Boiler as well. Even though I was a beginner at the time, I know that I learned very quickly and tend to want more advanced tech so that I can easily grow into it. So the dual boiler's main appeal for me was that I could brew espresso and steam milk at the same time, and that there are actual boilers, not a thermo coil like in the Barista Pro. So the temperatures of my espresso and milk would be closer to ideal. Plus, there's a 58mm portafilter, so it's more legit. Okay, back on track. Since this was going to be my first machine, I was hesitant to invest $1,600 on a dual boiler. It has a larger footprint than the other Breville machines and requires a separate grinder, so that's more space and money needed. Okay, so I got the Breville Barista Pro, and after a year and a half, I'm here to share my thoughts on a couple different aspects of the machine. The built-in grinder. I had heard the standalone Smart Grinder from Breville is essentially the same as the built-in grinder on the Breville Barista Pro. Breville claims their standalone grinder can grind coarse, for like French press, all the way down to fine espresso grind. I already knew going into it that the Barista Pro's grinder can be adjusted internally. That's where the macro settings can be changed to be coarser or finer. And that's the only way a grinder could have such a vast range of grind sizes. So I adjusted that burr setting to be finer and ideal for espresso before I even turned on the machine for the first time. For the most part, the built-in grinder is sufficient. Does it retain coffee beans? Yes, definitely. How much it retains can vary from like half a gram up to one gram. A couple months in, I developed the habit of hitting the top of the hopper lid to get any retained grinds out. But every time I clean out the grinder, there are always whole beans stuck along the rim. And for someone who cares about the ratio of beans going in versus the espresso coming out, the retention is frustrating. Banging on the hopper ruins the peaceful espresso making routine. And if you don't want to bang on it, then you need to be okay wasting some coffee beans every time you grind. As for taste, if you add sweetener or syrups and stuff to your coffee, I don't think you'll notice a difference in taste at all. But if you have any intention of developing your palate for coffee and all the varying notes from bean to bean, 
this is something to consider. The coffee made from the built-in grinder doesn't taste bad, but it's kind of like getting a higher-end DSLR camera and limiting yourself to a cheap nifty 50 forever. You won't necessarily know what you're missing, but once you pop a 1.2 lens on there, your mind will be blown. Temperature. The Breville Barista Pro's heating mechanism is a single thermo coil. You may have heard other espresso machines have a single or dual boiler, like the Breville Dual Boiler. This isn't the best analogy, but a thermo coil is like heating food in a microwave rather than on a stove. The microwave, or in this case thermo coil, turns on quickly and can get your food or water hot, but it doesn't get it as thoroughly heated as when you heat it on the stove, which is the boiler in this analogy. So a common complaint of Breville Barista Pro users is that the espresso doesn't come out at the advertised temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I myself have noticed my first shot is much colder than when I'm making the third or fourth drink in a row. Leaving the machine on for several minutes before you begin doesn't make a difference because there's no boiler that heated up the machine. Nothing starts to heat up until you start running a shot or the steam one. And since most people aren't making five drinks in a row, the only thing you can do to help is to run dummy shots with an empty portafilter in the group head. I recommend preheating your cups with this dummy shot water so that the water goes to good use too. The Barista Pro doesn't have a cup warmer on top anyway, so this is a good move regardless. The Steam Wand and Knob I don't have too much to say here. I remember the knob, which turns on the hot water and steam wand, is hard to turn, so I very quickly changed it to the steam lever from Crema Coffee Products and haven't looked back since. The steam wand power is great. What I don't like is how long it takes to turn on. And when you turn it off and back on, it takes long to turn back on. It's like it gets powered off, you know? So when you purge the wand after steaming, it takes a couple seconds before it even starts purging. This is probably because it's powered by a thermo coil. And because the machine is powered by a single thermo coil, you can't use the steam wand while brewing the espresso. Once you become more of an intermediate home barista, that might get annoying because while you're steaming your milk, your espresso will start to set and stiffen kind of. So you almost always have to swirl or stir it before pouring your latte art. Alternatively, if you steam your milk first and then brew the espresso, your steamed milk might start to separate so the foam will be on top and the milk will be on the bottom. Okay, now the biggest question. If I were to buy my first machine, knowing what I know now, what machine would I have gotten? When all is said and done, I think I made the best choice for my budget at the time. If I would have gotten an alternate combo, it might have been the Breville Bambino Plus with a Barazza Sete 30 grinder. I would guess the Bambino Plus has similar heating issues to the Barista Pro since it also has a thermo coil heating system. And again, it doesn't have the display that I love on the Barista Pro, but that combo would come out to about 800 US dollars, which is $50 less than the Barista Pro. If money wasn't as much of an issue and I was deciding based on my ability to learn quickly and efficiently, I would have gone with the Breville Dual Boiler with a standalone grinder. Okay, that's all I've got for now. I really hope everything I covered is helpful to you, whether you're looking to buy a Breville Barista Pro or better understand the one you have. If you're looking for more how-tos and tutorials using the Barista Pro, please check out the coffee playlist on my channel. I've got a lot of videos that you will probably find helpful. And in the description of this video, there's a link that has all of my espresso tools and accessories, including the machine and all my favorite mugs and glasses. There's also a link to my Patreon, which is where you can ask me questions directly in a private community while supporting my work. 
If my videos are helpful to you, please consider joining. I'm very grateful for all of you and your support, and I hope that you're doing well. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum.